Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 52 through 55. Alma, chapter 52. And now it came to pass, in the twenty and sixth year of the reign of the judges, over the people of Nephi, behold, when the Lamanites awoke on the first morning of the first month, behold, they found Amalickiah was dead in his own tent, and they also saw that Teancum was ready to give them battle on that day. And now when the Lamanites saw this, they were affrighted, and they abandoned their design in marching into the land northward and retreated with all their army into the city of Mulek, and sought protection in their fortifications. And it came to pass that the brother of Amalickiah was appointed king over the people, and his name was Amaron. Thus King Amaron, the brother of King Amalickiah, was appointed to reign in his stead. And it came to pass that he did command that his people should maintain those cities which they had taken by the shedding of blood, for they had not taken any cities, save they had lost much blood. And now Teancum saw that the Lamanites were determined to maintain those cities which they had taken, and those parts of the land which they had obtained possession of. And also seeing the enormity of their number, Teancum thought it was not expedient that he should attempt to attack them in their forts. But he kept his men round about as if making preparations for war. Yea, and truly, he was preparing to defend himself against them, by casting up walls round about and preparing places of resort. And it came to pass that he kept thus preparing for war until Moroni had sent a large number of men to strengthen his army. And Moroni also sent orders unto him that he should retain all the prisoners who fell into his hands. For as the Lamanites had taken many prisoners, that he should retain all the prisoners of the Lamanites as a ransom for those whom the Lamanites had taken. And he also sent orders unto him that he should fortify the land bountiful, and secure the narrow pass which led into the land northward, lest the Lamanites should obtain that point, and should have power to harass them on every side. And Moroni also sent unto him, desiring him that he would be faithful in maintaining that quarter of the land, and that he would seek every opportunity to scourge the Lamanites in that quarter as much as was in his power, that perhaps he might take again by stratagem, or some other way those cities which had been taken out of their hands, and that he also would fortify and strengthen the cities round about which had not fallen into the hands of the Lamanites. And he also said unto him, I would come unto you, but behold, the Lamanites are upon us in the borders of the land by the west sea, and behold, I go against them, therefore I cannot come unto you. Now the king, Amaron, had departed out of the land of Zarahemla, and had made known unto the queen concerning the death of his brother, and had gathered together a large number of men, and had marched forth against the Nephites on the borders by the West Sea. And thus he was endeavoring to harass the Nephites, and to draw away a part of their forces to that part of the land, while he had commanded those whom he had left to possess the cities which he had taken, that they should also harass the Nephites on the borders by the East Sea, and should take possession of their lands as much as was in their power according to the power of their armies. And thus were the Nephites in those dangerous circumstances in the ending of the twenty and sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. But behold, it came to pass in the twenty and seventh year of the reign of the judges that Teancum, by the command of Moroni, who had established armies to protect the south and the west borders of the land, and had begun his march towards the land bountiful, that he might assist Teancum with his men in retaking the cities which they had lost. And it came to pass that Teancum had received orders to make an attack upon the city of Mulek, and retake it, if it were possible. And it came to pass that Teancum made preparations to make an attack upon the city of Mulek, and march forth with his army against the Lamanites. But he saw that it was impossible that he could overpower them while they were in their fortifications. Therefore he abandoned his designs, and returned again to the city bountiful, to wait for the coming of Moroni, that he might receive strength to his army. And it came to pass that Moroni did arrive with his army at the land bountiful, in the latter end of the twenty and seventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And in the commencement of the twenty and eighth year, Moroni and Teancum, and many of the chief captains, held a council of war, 
what they should do to cause the Lamanites to come out against them to battle, or that they might by some means flatter them out of their strongholds, that they might gain advantage over them and take again the city of Mulek. And it came to pass they sent embassies to the army of the Lamanites, which protected the city of Mulek to their leader, whose name was Jacob, desiring him that he would come out with his armies to meet them upon the plains between the two cities. But behold, Jacob, who was a Zoramite, would not come out with his army to meet them upon the plains. And it came to pass that Moroni, having no hopes of meeting them upon fair grounds, therefore he resolved upon a plan that he might decoy the Lamanites out of their strongholds. Therefore he caused that Teancum should take a small number of men and march down near the seashore, and Moroni and his army by night marched in the wilderness on the west of the city Mulek, and thus on the morrow, when the guards of the Lamanites had discovered Teancum, they ran and told it unto Jacob their leader. And it came to pass that the armies of the Lamanites did march forth against Teancum, supposing by their numbers to overpower Teancum, because of the smallness of his numbers. And as Teancum saw the armies of the Lamanites coming out against him, he began to retreat down by the seashore northward. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that he began to flee, they took courage and pursued them with vigor. And while Teancum was thus leading away the Lamanites who were pursuing them in vain, behold, Moroni commanded that a part of his army who were with him should march forth into the city and take possession of it. And thus they did, and slew all those who had been left to protect the city, yea, all those who would not yield up their weapons of war. And thus Moroni had obtained possession of the city Mulek, with a part of his army, while he marched with the remainder to meet the Lamanites, when they should return from the pursuit of Teancum. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did pursue Teancum until they came near the city Bountiful. And then they were met by Lehi and a small army, which had been left to protect the city Bountiful. And now behold, when the chief captains of the Lamanites had beheld Lehi with his army coming against them, they fled in much confusion, lest perhaps they should not obtain the city Mulek before Lehi should overtake them, for they were wearied because of their march, and the men of Lehi were fresh. Now the Lamanites did not know that Moroni had been in their rear with his army, and all they feared was Lehi and his men. Now Lehi was not desirous to overtake them till they should meet Moroni and his army. And it came to pass that before the Lamanites had retreated far, they were surrounded by the Nephites, by the men of Moroni on one hand, and the men of Lehi on the other, all of whom were fresh and full of strength. But the Lamanites were wearied because of their long march. And Moroni commanded his men that they should fall upon them, until they had given up their weapons of war. And it came to pass that Jacob, being their leader, being also a Zoramite, and having an unconquerable spirit, he led the Lamanites forth to battle with exceeding fury against Moroni. Moroni being in their course of march, therefore, Jacob was determined to slay them and cut his way through to the city of Mulek. But behold, Moroni and his men were more powerful. Therefore they did not give way before the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they fought on both hands with exceeding fury. And there were many slain on both sides. Yea, and Moroni was wounded, and Jacob was killed. And Lehi pressed upon their rear with such fury with his strong men, that the Lamanites in the rear delivered up their weapons of war, and the remainder of them, being much confused, knew not whither to go or to strike. Now Moroni, seeing their confusion, he said unto them, If you will bring forth your weapons of war and deliver them up, behold, we will forbear shedding your blood. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites had heard these words, their chief captains, all those who were not slain, came forth and threw down their weapons of war at the feet of Moroni, and also commanded their men that they should do the same. But behold, there were many who would not, and those who would not deliver up their swords were taken and bound, and their weapons of war were taken from them, and they were compelled to march with their brethren forth into the land bountiful. And now the number of prisoners who were taken exceeded more than the number of those who had been slain, yea, more than those who had been slain on both sides. 
Alma chapter 53. And it came to pass that they did set guards over the prisoners of the Lamanites, and did compel them to go forth and bury their dead, yea, and also the dead of the Nephites who were slain. And Moroni placed men over them to guard them while they should perform their labors. And Moroni went to the city of Mulek with Lehi, and took command of the city, and gave it unto Lehi. Now behold, this Lehi was a man who had been with Moroni in the war part of all his battles, and he was a man like unto Moroni, and they rejoiced in each other's safety. Yea, they were beloved by each other, and also beloved by all the people of Nephi. And it came to pass that after the Lamanites had finished burying their dead and also the dead of the Nephites, they were marched back into the land of Bountiful, and Teancum, by the orders of Moroni, caused that they should commence laboring and digging a ditch round about the land or the city Bountiful. And he caused that they should build a breastwork of timbers upon the inner bank of the ditch, and they cast up dirt out of the ditch against the breastwork of timbers. And thus they did cause the Lamanites to labor until they had encircled the city of Bountiful round about with a strong wall of timbers and earth to an exceeding height. And this city became an exceeding stronghold ever after. And in this city they did guard the prisoners of the Lamanites, yea, even within a wall which they had caused them to build with their own hands. And now Moroni was compelled to cause the Lamanites to labor, because it was easy to guard them while at their labor. And he desired all his forces when he should make an attack upon the Lamanites. And it came to pass that Moroni had thus gained a victory over one of the greatest of the armies of the Lamanites, and had obtained possession of the city of Mulek, which was one of the strongest holds of the Lamanites in the land of Nephi. And thus he had also built a stronghold to retain his prisoners. And it came to pass that he did no more attempt a battle with the Lamanites in that year, but he did employ his men in preparing for war, yea, and in making fortifications to guard against the Lamanites, yea, and also delivering their women and their children from famine and affliction, and providing food for their armies. And now it came to pass that the armies of the Lamanites, on the west sea south, while in the absence of Moroni on account of some intrigue amongst the Nephites which caused dissensions amongst them, had gained some ground over the Nephites, yea, insomuch that they had obtained possession of a number of their cities in that part of the land. And thus, because of iniquity amongst themselves, yea, because of dissensions and intrigue among themselves, they were placed in the most dangerous circumstances. And now behold, I have somewhat to say concerning the people of Ammon, who in the beginning were Lamanites, but by Ammon and his brethren, or rather, by the power and word of God, they had been converted unto the Lord, and they had been brought down into the land of Zarahemla, and had ever since been protected by the Nephites. And because of their oath, they had been kept from taking up arms against their brethren, for they had taken an oath that they never would shed blood more, and according to their oath they would have perished. Yea, they would have suffered themselves to have fallen into the hands of their brethren, had it not been for the pity and the exceeding love which Ammon and his brethren had had for them. And for this cause they were brought down into the land of Zarahemla, and they ever had been protected by the Nephites. But it came to pass that when they saw the danger and the many afflictions and tribulations which the Nephites bore for them, they were moved with compassion and were desirous to take up arms in the defense of their country. But behold, as they were about to take their weapons of war, they were overpowered by the persuasions of Helaman and his brethren, for they were about to break the oath which they had made, and Helaman feared lest by so doing they should lose their souls. Therefore all those who had entered into this covenant were compelled to behold their brethren wade through their afflictions in their dangerous circumstances at this time. But behold, it came to pass, they had many sons who had not entered into a covenant, that they would not take their weapons of war to defend themselves against their enemies. Therefore they did assemble themselves together at this time, as many as were able to take up arms, and they called themselves Nephites. And they entered into a covenant to fight for the liberty of the Nephites, yea, to protect the land unto the laying down of their lives. Yea, even they covenanted that they never would give up their liberty 
but they would fight in all cases to protect the Nephites and themselves from bondage. Now behold, there were two thousand of those young men who entered into this covenant, and took their weapons of war to defend their country. And now behold, as they never had hitherto been a disadvantage to the Nephites, they became now at this period of time also a great support. For they took their weapons of war, and they would that Helaman should be their leader. And they were all young men, and they were exceedingly valiant for courage, and also for strength and activity. But behold, this was not all. They were men who were true at all times in whatsoever thing they were entrusted. Yea, they were men of truth and soberness, for they had been taught to keep the commandments of God and to walk uprightly before him. And now it came to pass that Helaman did march at the head of his two thousand stripling soldiers to the support of the people in the borders of the land on the south by the west sea. And thus ended the twenty and eighth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Alma chapter 54 And now it came to pass, in the commencement of the twenty and ninth year of the judges, that Amaron sent unto Moroni, desiring that he would exchange prisoners. And it came to pass that Moroni felt to rejoice exceedingly at this request, for he desired the provisions which were imparted for the support of the Lamanite prisoners for the support of his own people, and he also desired his own people for the strengthening of his army. Now the Lamanites had taken many women and children, and there was not a woman nor a child among all the prisoners of Moroni or the prisoners whom Moroni had taken. Therefore Moroni resolved upon a stratagem to obtain as many prisoners of the Nephites from the Lamanites as it were possible. Therefore he wrote an epistle, and sent it by the servant of Amaron, the same who had brought an epistle to Moroni. Now these are the words which he wrote unto Amaron, saying, Behold, Amaron, I have written unto you somewhat concerning this war which ye have waged against my people, or rather which thy brother hath waged against them and which ye are still determined to carry on after his death. Behold, I would tell you somewhat concerning the justice of God, and the sword of his almighty wrath, which doth hang over you except ye repent, and withdraw your armies into your own lands, or the lands of your possessions, which is the land of Nephi. Yea, I would tell you these things if ye were capable of hearkening unto them. Yea, I would tell you concerning that awful hell that awaits to receive such murderers as thou and thy brother have been, except ye repent and withdraw your murderous purposes and return with your armies to your own lands. But as ye have once rejected these things, and have fought against the people of the Lord, even so I may expect you will do it again. And now, behold, we are prepared to receive you. Yea, and except you withdraw your purposes, behold, ye will pull down the wrath of that God whom you have rejected upon you, even to your utter destruction. But, as the Lord liveth, our armies shall come upon you, except ye withdraw, and ye shall soon be visited with death, for we will retain our cities and our lands. Yea, and we will maintain our religion and the cause of our God. But behold, it supposeth me that I talk to you concerning these things in vain. Or it supposeth me that thou art a child of hell. Therefore I will close my epistle by telling you that I will not exchange prisoners, save it be on conditions that ye will deliver up a man and his wife and his children for one prisoner. If this be the case, that ye will do it, I will exchange. And behold, if you do not this, I will come against you with my armies. Yea, even I will arm my women and my children. And I will come against you, and I will follow you even into your own land, which is the land of our first inheritance. Yea, and it shall be blood for blood, yea, life for life. And I will give you battle, even until you are destroyed from off the face of the earth. Behold, I am in my anger, and also my people. Ye have sought to murder us, and we have only sought to defend ourselves. But behold, if ye seek to destroy us more, we will seek to destroy you. Yea, and we will seek our land, the land of our first inheritance. Now I close my epistle. I am Moroni. I am a leader of the people of the Nephites. Now it came to pass that Amaron, when he had received this epistle, was angry, and he wrote another epistle unto Moroni. And these are the words which he wrote, saying, I am Amaron, the king of the Lamanites. 
I am the brother of Amalickiah, whom ye have murdered. Behold, I will avenge his blood upon you. Yea, and I will come upon you with my armies, for I fear not your threatenings. For behold, your fathers did wrong their brethren, insomuch that they did rob them of their right to the government when it rightfully belonged unto them. And now, behold, if ye will lay down your arms, and subject yourselves to be governed by those to whom the government doth rightly belong, then will I cause that my people shall lay down their weapons, and shall be at war no more. Behold, ye have breathed out many threatenings against me and my people. But behold, we fear not your threatenings. Nevertheless, I will grant to exchange prisoners according to your request, gladly, and that I may preserve my food for my men of war. And we will wage a war which shall be eternal, either to the subjecting the Nephites to our authority, or to their eternal extinction. And as concerning that God whom ye say we have rejected, behold, we know not such a being, neither do ye. But if it so be that there is such a thing, we know not but that he hath made us as well as you. And if it so be that there is a devil and a hell, behold, will he not send you there to dwell with my brother whom ye have murdered, whom ye have hinted that he hath gone to such a place? But behold, these things matter not. I am Amaron and a descendant of Zoram, whom your fathers pressed and brought out of Jerusalem. And behold, now I am a bold Lamanite. Behold, this war hath been waged to avenge their wrongs, and to maintain and to obtain their rights to the government. And I close my epistle to Moroni. Alma, chapter 55 Now it came to pass that when Moroni had received this epistle he was more angry, because he knew that Amaron had a perfect knowledge of his fraud. Yea, and he knew that Amaron knew that it was not a just cause that had caused him to wage a war against the people of Nephi. And he said, Behold, I will not exchange prisoners with Amaron, save he will withdraw his purpose, as I have stated in my epistle. For I will not grant unto him that he shall have any more power than what he hath got. Behold, I know the place where the Lamanites do guard my people, whom they have taken prisoners, and as Amaron would not grant unto me mine epistle, behold, I will give unto him according to my words. Yea, I will seek death among them, until they shall sue for peace. And now it came to pass that when Moroni had said these words, he caused that a search should be made among his men, that perhaps he might find a man who was a descendant of Laman among them. And it came to pass that they found one whose name was Laman. And he was one of the servants of the king who was murdered by Amalickiah. Now Moroni caused that Laman and a small number of his men should go forth unto the guards who were over the Nephites. Now the Nephites were guarded in the city of Gid, Therefore Moroni appointed Laman, and caused that a small number of men should go with him. And when it was evening, Laman went to the guards who were over the Nephites, and behold, they saw him coming, and they hailed him. But he saith unto them, Fear not, behold, I am a Lamanite. Behold, we have escaped from the Nephites, and they sleep. And behold, we have taken of their wine, and brought with us. Now when the Lamanites heard these words, they received him with joy, and they said unto him, Give us of your wine, that we may drink. We are glad that ye have thus taken wine with you, for we are weary. But Laman said unto them, Let us keep our wine till we go against the Nephites to battle. But this saying only made them more desirous to drink of the wine. For, said they, We are weary, therefore let us take of the wine, and by and by we shall receive wine for our rations, which will strengthen us to go against the Nephites. And Laman said unto them, you may do according to your desires. And it came to pass that they did take of the wine freely, and it was pleasant to their taste, therefore they took of it more freely, and it was strong, having been prepared in its strength. And it came to pass they did drink, and were merry, and by and by they were all drunken. And now when Laman and his men saw that they were all drunken, and were in a deep sleep, they returned to Moroni and told him all the things that had happened. And now this was according to the design of Moroni, and Moroni had prepared his men with weapons of war, and he went to the city Gid, while the Lamanites were in a deep sleep and drunken, and cast in weapons of war unto the prisoners, insomuch that they were all armed, yea, even to their women, and all those of their children, as many as were able to use a weapon of war, when Moroni had armed all those prisoners, and all those things were done in a profound silence. 
But had they awakened the Lamanites, behold, they were drunken, and the Nephites could have slain them. But behold, this was not the desire of Moroni. He did not delight in murder or bloodshed, but he delighted in the saving of his people from destruction. And for this cause he might not bring upon him injustice. He would not fall upon the Lamanites and destroy them in their drunkenness. But he had obtained his desires, for he had armed those prisoners of the Nephites who were within the wall of the city, and had given them power to gain possession of those parts which were within the walls. And then he caused the men who were with him to withdraw a pace from them, and surround the armies of the Lamanites. Now behold, this was done in the night time, so that when the Lamanites awoke in the morning, they beheld that they were surrounded by the Nephites without, and that their prisoners were armed within. And thus they saw that the Nephites had power over them, and in these circumstances they found that it was not expedient that they should fight with the Nephites. Therefore their chief captains demanded their weapons of war, and they brought them forth and cast them at the feet of the Nephites, pleading for mercy. Now behold, this was the desire of Moroni. He took them prisoners of war, and took possession of the city, and caused that all the prisoners should be liberated who were Nephites. And they did join the army of Moroni, and were a great strength to his army. And it came to pass that he did cause the Lamanites, whom he had taken prisoners, that they should commence a labor in strengthening the fortifications round about the city Gid. And it came to pass that when he had fortified the city Gid according to his desires, he caused that his prisoners should be taken to the city Bountiful, and he also guarded that city with an exceedingly strong force. And it came to pass that they did, notwithstanding all the intrigues of the Lamanites, keep and protect all the prisoners whom they had taken, and also maintain all the ground and the advantage which they had retaken. And it came to pass that the Nephites began again to be victorious and to reclaim their rights and their privileges. Many time did the Lamanites attempt to encircle them about by night, but in these attempts they did lose many prisoners. And many times did they attempt to administer of their wine to the Nephites, that they might destroy them with poison or with drunkenness. But behold, the Nephites were not slow to remember the Lord their God in this their time of affliction. They could not be taken in their snares. Yea, they would not partake of their wine, save they had first given to some of the Lamanite prisoners. And they were thus cautious that no poison should be administered among them. For if their wine would poison a Lamanite, it would also poison a Nephite, and thus they did try all their liquors. And now it came to pass that it was expedient for Moroni to make preparations to attack the city Morianton. For behold, the Lamanites had by their labors fortified the city Morianton until it had become an exceeding stronghold, and they were continually bringing new forces into that city and also new supplies of provisions. And thus ended the twenty and ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. End of Alma, chapters 52 through 55.